another beautiful t-shirt day in December. This is just crazy, let me tell you. We're hoofing it today. We're gonna hoof it right into these cedars and tear down the existing structure that's there and hopefully build something really cool. Starting with a clean slate. That always feels good, especially if you're a troublemaker. Today's step two is a brew dog nanny state, it's called. This is a hoppy golden ale. Let's give it a try. Eh, it's not getting the Craig Tube ew, but all right, moving on. New gear day. I got a new pack. I finally retired the old twenty-seven dollar pack. Um, it was literally ripping apart. One of the straps fell off. Several of the buckles and stuff broke. Zippers breaking, all kinds of stuff. It lasted me for one year. Um, cheap Chinese junk. However, I will say this, if there's uh, someone out there, or a kid especially, who is wanting to get into bushcraft or any of this stuff, and they do want a bag, I'm going to give my bag away to the first person who asks for it. So, it's a piece, giant piece of crap, but it will hold your gear um, until you get something better. So, first person that wants it, you can absolutely have it. If you don't have the money to buy a bag, I'm going to gladly give this to the first person that leaves a comment on my video who wants it. Okay, let's check out my new pack. I actually got this pack reluctantly. This is the Teton Sports uh, 5200, I think it is. It's a, it's a 70 liter plus 10, whatever that means. I uh, did a lot of research and... First thing I discovered was people were paying 300, 500 and up for packs. And I said, "No, not happening. No way, Jose. I am not paying $300 for a stinking backpack. I'm just not that No, I'm not going to do it." So, this is considered an entry level 
pack. Uh, it is framed. It has an aluminum internal frame. It runs about $100. I think I paid $90 for it. So, not expensive. I don't expect it to hold up for years and years. But I do expect for it to hold up for more than one year. I purposely have it a little bit jam-packed today because two reasons. I want, I want to really test it out and see how it does under a big heavy load. And I also am still a beginner, so I don't pack lightly yet. But as I get more experienced, I'm sure my contents of my pack will go down in size and, and amount. But there was another brand that I'm actually really wanting, and it has either been discontinued or it's just really super hard to get. I'm on a waiting list for it, but it's supposed to be better. There are a lot of rumors and videos about Teton saying that the products in the last few years have went downhill. So I don't have super high expectations, but it should be better than the $27 pack that I had before. So I'm going to be experimenting with this guy over the next few, over the winter here, especially when we're, we're going to do some hiking and a lot of bushcrafting and I'll be bringing this bad boy along with me. All right. Time for the Corporal's Corner style rundown on what we're going to do today. First off, I'd like to say imitation is the highest form of flattery. And I hope that the Corporal, if he saw this, would be flattered and not offended or think that I'm just some kind of hack or whatever. Listen, I don't claim to be a real bushcrafter, real survivalist. I'm just a guy out getting some nature learning as much as I possibly can, and working towards that end goal. I have a really long ways to go, and I'm taking my time getting there. So, I don't want him to think that I'm a BS artist or anything like that. That's not what I'm trying to do here. The In the Bush series is about learning with me along the way. And we're not always going to do things the bushcraft way. You might see me using power tools in the woods. You know, I, I, nothing's really off limits with me. I'm not limiting my... Um, I'm not arresting my development uh, at any certain point. Anyhow, I just... I would love to meet Sean Kelly at some point. I think it'd be pretty cool. I enjoy his videos, but one of the things that he, he does talk about kind of hacks in the woods that just kind of copy him, and that's not at all what I'm trying to do. Um, and hopefully he would be flattered. So here's what we're going to do today. Um, we've got a clean slate. I took my wall down because some of those logs were dead, and I need green wood there because there's going to be a fire close. And then where the shelter was before, we're going to build another similar shelter, but this one's going to be enclosed on the sides and it's going to be a trapper's cabin style shelter. Open on one end to the fire. We're going to do a long fire and we're going to have the wall down the side just like we did before. And we're going to have a wall on the end as well. So we got a lot of work to do today. So it's time to get to work.
as you can see, I worked all afternoon. Now you can kind of get an idea for what I'm doing here. Enclosed on the top and the back and on the two sides, eventually. And open to the fire. Shelter is now established. I'm happy with this. I'm totally comfortable with this. This is great. So the next thing we need to do is establish bedding. Now, I have kind of some steps that I've developed uh, over time here doing this in the bush. And um, step one, of course, is arrival. Step two, of course, you know. Um, step three is establish. Well, and it depends on the weather and the situation, but the next few steps are shelter, bedding, fire, and then food, of course. So shelter is established. Now we need to establish bedding. Fire is established. So what I'm going to do is we're going to use the Hutchins roll again, and I'm going to stuff it full of hay just like I did down at the creek. So we're going to get bedding established, and then... Then we'll be golden after that. <sighs> the beds at this hotel are awful lumpy. Things are starting to get a little bit more comfortable. Just getting a couple layers of blankets on here makes a huge difference. Uh, this is totally not bad at all now. I can dig this. Okay, we gotta think of something different here. I'm not gonna waste, don't waste too much energy on one task. If you're working on a task and it seems to be dictating too much energy, move on to another one. It's not worth it. Bushcrafting, each task should only require a certain amount of energy. If you're using too much energy on one task, then you're wasting your time. Time is of the essence. Uh, the sun's going down. You have to build a shelter. You have to build a fire. You have to get your bedding. You have to get everything right. Get everything in place. Um, don't waste too much time on one task. If it's not working, it's not working. Move on to something else and uh, uh, figure out a more efficient way to do whatever task that was you were trying to complete. Um, in this case, I was trying to do a uh, split. I was trying to split this log so that there was a flat side. We're in a cedar forest. There are tons, there are dozens and dozens of other cedar trees. I'm not going to waste my time with this piece of wood. Oh. I happen to have, for supper tonight, uh, I bought this Pacific salmon side. It's been in the freezer for a while, and it's probably time to get it done. So, you know, you see the cedar plank salmon. You see that a lot in the grocery store where it comes on like a little wood plank, cedar plank. So I went ahead and marinated this. I did it, actually I brined it. I did a dry brine. It's good to go. I think I'm going to peg it right to this flat spot of this cedar here. They normally use wood spikes, but we're just going to use some nails because because this is the way we roll. By the way, who does this? So, 
we want to get it close enough to the, to the fire that it begins to cook and begins to smoke but doesn't go crazy so uh, we're gonna just like put it like right there um, I'm gonna check the heat level right there I can hold my hand there but after about 10 seconds I have to take it away I think we're good this is how they do it in other countries. I've seen it done before. So, we're going to see how it works. Here's where we're at. We've got the smoked salmon that, oh my God, turned out amazing. Upright on a piece of cedar standing next to the fire. How cool is that? As you can see, there's a couple of spots that are dished out, and that's where I taste tested it. And uh, so what I did was brown sugar and kosher salt as the uh, brine. And what I did was a dry brine. Um, I just rubbed it with brown sugar, kosher salt the day before, and I let it soak for overnight, and then I washed it off. So here, what we have is some rice, quite a lot of rice, because I don't want to go to bed hungry. And uh, so quite a lot of rice here, and uh, about a third of a stick of butter, and lemon pepper seasoning. I'm just going to incorporate this salmon right into that. Oh man, smoked salmon on a cedar chunk of wood in a cedar forest. Oh man. Excuse me while I finish the rest of this dinner and make weird vocal sounds and whatnot. I'll be back momentarily. In case I hadn't mentioned earlier, I put my Arcturus survival shelter up uh, on the end of things here to reflect all the heat back at me. And that it is doing. So, very simple. Um, check out the fire I got going here. This is actually inadvertently, not even trying, I've just been putting longer pieces on the fire. And... What do you know? I have a long fire going on. It's about three and a half foot long, uh, so I'll call it a longish fire. Actually, kind of mind blown as to how warm I really am. <sighs> All right, so my stomach is full, full of rice and smoked salmon. I am totally 100% warm. There's no drafts. There's no nothing. What a perfect night for bushcrafting. It's 36 degrees out. 35. And I feel just like I would in my house. In fact, I'm a little hot. I'm going to have to start shedding layers here. Well, I'm going to sit here and listen to a podcast. And enjoy this longish fire and the warmth that is radiating down on me, in on me, up on me, and enjoy this shelter and this wonderful night here. And uh, I want to say a big thanks to my Uncle Mike from Bluegrass, Iowa. He came down and went hunting last weekend. And uh, uh, super guy, super guy, and in the bush fan. Uncle Mike, love you, buddy. Thanks for the four roses. That'll help any guy sleep in the bush.
This is some weird creme brulee flavored coffee that I got in the bargain bin the other day. What the heck? I got a piece of tree bark or something in there. Gives it a bit of woodiness. 35 degrees for a low last night and this shelter did absolutely fine. I was warm all night. Warmth was never really an issue and I went until 8 o'clock this morning without putting any logs on the fire so did really well in that aspect. I'm really excited. This don't look like much yet but I'm really excited about what this is going to become. I've got the 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 basic the basis laid the foundation is laid so to speak for what is going to become a really really cool bushcraft camp so uh so stick around keep watching those in the bush episodes keep hitting that like button if you haven't subscribed please subscribe i just passed 100 subscribers on youtube Ooh, 100 subscribers but it's hey it's didn't have it before so um, let's try to hit 150. I'm really, really getting my feet wet in, in this whole being in the bush thing. I'm still just a newbie. Again, I can't stress enough, I'm still just getting started. The guys that I idolize and watch, they are way more experienced than me. I'm just out here having fun and uh, learning a little bit along the way. So without further ado, um, thanks everybody for watching, and we will see you next time in the bush.